What's up guys, Ivan Carranza here, and today we're gonna take a quick look at the Ampeg SVT Suite plugin. This is a plugin that was released quite recently by Ampeg itself and not by a third party company, which is quite exciting, and I was genuinely curious to give it a try. Now, let me tell you right away that this video is not sponsored by Ampeg in any way. I have no affiliation to the company, so these are my thoughts and opinions, and I downloaded the trial version to give it a try, because I am really curious to see how the plugin sounds like. For the video, we're gonna go in a second to my screen, where I'm gonna run through the settings of the plugin and show you all the controls, and play with my bass as well, and then we're also gonna check a track and see how the bass sounds like in a mix once I turn on the plugin. So let's check that out. And these are the default settings of the amp or the plugin once you, you know, put in your single chain and here's how it sounds like. Really thick sounding compared to It sounds really good. That classic Ampeg low made punch. Let me put this quick. Now let's take a look at the at, at what's in the plugin first of all. You have three different amps. You have the Heritage SVT, which has these two different channels. Channel, uh, I don't have my glasses. 89 and 75. Um, they have different EQ sections and they sound a bit different as well. Then you have the SVT4 Pro, which is a bit more modern sounding. And then you have the Heritage CL, which also sounds different than the first one. And then you have the cap section, which in my opinion is probably one of the coolest features of this plugin, because you can do a lot of things. First of all, right now there are two cabinets happening or, or, or active at the same time, so you can toggle them on or off. And for, for the cabinets, you can have the cabinet simulations that Apex provides you, or you can also load your own input responses, which is pretty cool. And the cabinets, you have the 8x10 AV, you have the 6x10, you have a 4x10, you have a you know, 15, 210, 212, 112. Additionally, you have different microphones here, which also sound different from each other. And one of the coolest features for me is that you can move the microphone like this <laughs> and, you know, change the sound because some other plugins give you, like, fixed microphone choices and you don't know in which position they're in. Some of them really work right off the gate, you know, just like that, but sometimes being able to tweak things a little bit further is always good. And you can set the mic level, and you can add a low cut or a high cut. And then you can also blend in a room mic, which is pretty cool as well. And then you can do the same thing for the second cabinet. On top of that, you also have a chain of effects that you can also just drag and drop and put them in different positions so you can have different combination of effects. You have a phaser, uh, chorus, compressor, drive, and an octave. I'm going to take a, look, uh, take a look at those in a bit as well. And then on the output section, you can also turn on the, the DI, the SVT DI, which is pretty nice. And you can even turn on and off every section. So you only have the SVT DI, for example. <laughs> some more saturation increase the volume you can hear the tube breaking in a little bit and you can control the amount of saturation that you want you know, here and you can blend that with the uh, with the amp, which is pretty cool. And then you also have the input control, so you can you know, control how much volume is going in to the the amp and the pedals and the DDI. If your bass is too hot or too quiet, you can adjust that. And you have a noise gate as well, which is pretty useful if you have uh, a lot of drive happening, for example. Now, let's check out some of the, of the sounds you can get out of this, because I think one of the coolest features here is that the presets that come with the, uh, the plugin are really great starting points. So let's go to the first one and then channel one clean. This is how it sounds like. Now 
let's go to the next one. Channel 2. And here's there's a lot some a lot more room mic happening and then of course you have different caps as well. A jump. Really cool sound. This one is nice for a pick, for example. Also pretty cool if you play with Peg. Very nice sound. Now the SVT4 Pro is a bit more, more bitey, more edgy. As you can see, there are a bunch of different presets here, but there are too many to cover in the video because there are a bunch of them. But like I said, they are a great starting point. Now, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna go to a different project, which is a song that I've already have written. And we're gonna test how the plugin sounds in the mix. Okay, so this is the project and I'm gonna play you a track like it is right now. The bass is clean, there's nothing happening there. This is the bass sound on its own. It's a really nice sounding P bass. Play with a pick. It's my GNL LB100. Now let's load the plugin. And I have to watch for the output. Okay, it's good. I really like the sound right off the gate. Right, it's pretty cool. Now let's load up a template. I'm gonna go with the edgy one. It might be a bit too much mid-range, so I'm gonna pull back here.
I like that. I mean, I just pulled back a little bit on the room mic and that made it fit a bit better. I'm gonna go to the uh, SBT Pro. I'm gonna try Rocky. It sounds a bit more clanky, right? There's more, um, more top end, and that's because the ultra high is triggered. Overall, I think this is a great plugin, especially considering all the options that you have available. You have the three amps, all the caps, all the mics, you have the room mic, you can blend the DI, and you have the effect pedals, so you have a bunch of options. With that being said, what I noticed, at least for me, is that having all those options sometimes is a bit distracting and doesn't lead me to the sound I want quicker because I'm just, I start turning and, I, and then I think, okay, what happens if I do this and that and then click over here and maybe more bass and whatnot. Uh, so sometimes having less options can get you results faster. Maybe it's happening for me because I need to experiment with the plugin more so I get to know how the response is or because there's so many options, right? But one thing I can say is that I have other plugins that also are like, you know, Ampic replications and I can get results a bit quicker. Now, the cool thing is that all the presets give you a great starting point for a sound. So you can pick one preset and then work from there, which is pretty cool. I'm really curious to know what you think about the plugin. So please let me know in the comment section down below. Also, if you wanna download the trial version, I'm gonna put a link in the description of the video so you can check that out. And if you liked the video, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay up to date with the content that's coming to the channel. As always, thank you guys for watching, let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care.